What's more, you lied in open court, which is unforgivably stupid. I wanted to tell you. But I was afraid that you'd think I'd try to kill Claudio. No one believed in me but you and Dr. Matteo. Are you doing these things? No. Let the jury hear Professor Falacci. He can tell them why it happened. Are you doing these things? No. Say you believe me. Julie. I want you to tell the court exactly what happened on the day your mother died. I was 15 and three months and I was coming home from school and it was late afternoon and already getting dark and from the bus stop I saw smoke, lots of it and it was coming from our house. I got closer and I saw huge flames coming out of the front door and going up the side of the house. And everything was blurry. And the heat and then I heard my mother's voice. And I couldn't get in. but she was trapped inside and I could hear her hitting and hitting and thumping the windows but they didn't open so I picked up a brick and I threw it at the window and the glass shattered and the air rushed in and it made this sound and then there was a huge explosion That's all I remember. The council told the landlord to put new windows in, but the ones that he put in wouldn't open. Because windows that open cost more money. I'm going to put this trial into temporary closed session. The jury will remain. What I'm proposing is the defense agrees to a six year sentence in the state mental hospital. Have you been to that place? I wouldn't leave my dog there. I'm sorry, but what we've just heard doesn't change the fundamental question of her guilt. Either she's suffering from a severe psychological trauma which caused her to start the fires, or, and we must consider this possibility, she was in some way involved in her mother's death. Perhaps you'd like time to consider the offer, Councillor. I don't need any more time. Your Honour, I'd like to introduce a new expert witness. The other manifestations of this episode consisted of numerous phone calls, the random detonation of mains fuses, power surges. During one week, 12,000 calls were made to the local speaking clock. And it was clear that the girl in the film caused all this? There is no suggestion that she willed them to happen. However, whatever does cause these events does seem to need, however, a focus of some kind, a person, someone who is troubled in some way. Troubled? Most often it's a combination of unusually stressful events all occurring at the same time. A death in the family, a long absence from home, 
being around other people who are themselves in a crisis of some kind. What does cause all these episodes to occur? Their origin remains unknown. Is there usually a resolution to these events? Typically, the attacks simply fade over time. However, some take the view that a resolution is achieved by a personal crisis in which the focus confronts whatever it is in them that attracts all of this activity. This confrontation is alleged to result in the return to a normal life. So, Professor, you don't believe in the spiritual apprehensions of truth that are beyond human comprehension? My intention, Your Honour, is to extend the laws of physics, not to destroy them. No further questions. Councillor Flores, do you have any questions for the witness? Your Honour, I have no intention of dignifying this uh, evidence with a cross-examination. A simple no will suffice, Councillor. <laughs> Your Honour, Julie McCulloch is an angry and violently jealous young woman. We have motive, we have opportunity, and we have absolute proof that Julie McCulloch is a cheat and a liar. No, we don't have motive. The prosecution has invented some lurid melodrama about the murderous jealousy of my client for which there isn't a shred of evidence. Well, I am delighted that defence has raised the matter of invention because we've just heard him try to claim that these fires were started by supernatural agents. The word inventive doesn't begin to do this theory justice, although I can think of a few that would. There are two forensic scientists with over 50 years of investigating arson between them with no idea as to how these fires were started, not one. Well, the prosecution is perfectly happy to concede that the defendant is clever as well as being guilty. So a child minor who left school at 16 can outwit two of the most experienced forensic scientists in Europe. She lied. She lied about a fire and she lied about a death that resulted from that fire and everybody in this courtroom heard that lie being told. Be quiet. I will not have you two brawling in my court. I'm sorry, Your Honour. It won't happen again. I ask the court's permission, however, to reply to the prosecution's last remark. I agree with the prosecution. My client perjured herself in open court. Is it wrong to commit perjury? Of course. But knowing there was no concrete evidence against me, but that I'd still been brought to trial for such a serious crime, would I lie in court to save myself from a 20-year sentence in a prison where I'd already been the victim of a violent attack? When I knew I was innocent? Yes, I'd lied. And so would you. You have to be certain before you send this young woman to prison. Absolutely certain. What really happened in Claudio Cenci's bedroom that night? Base your judgment on this fact. The only fact that we have available to us. The fact that we don't know. You must ask yourself two questions. First, did Julie McCulloch knowingly and with deliberate malice start these fires? If you decide that she did, then you must ask yourself the second question. Did she do so with the clear intention of burning Claudio Cenci to death? As you attempt to come to a decision, you may take the view that some of the evidence you have heard is neither relevant nor appropriate to a court of law. This is a view that you are completely entitled to take. You may retire.
happened when she disappeared? I, uh, I went back to the driver's door and it opened. She's shutting you out. It's as if she... As if she doesn't want me anymore. Let her go. You must part. It's as simple as that. I'm not the one saying this. Sarah's not the one saying it. It's you who's saying it. It's your vision. Have you reached a verdict?